Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Sonil Kalwani, third year resident in Holy Spirit Hospital, Mumbai. I'm presenting a rare obstetric case report. Are bunch of grapes always mole? Let's see. A 29-year-old female, primary gravida with spontaneous conception, was referred to ultrasound department in Holy Spirit Hospital for routine ultrasound at 27 week of gestation. She had no complaint of bleeding per vagina, no pain in the abdomen, no comorbidities. Her routine hematological and biochemical parameters were within normal limits. The NIPT reveals low risk for aneuploidies. Serum alpha fetoprotein and beta SCGs were mildly high. Ultrasound done at 27.3 weeks reveals a single viable fetus, which was corresponding to the age of gestation. The placenta was unusually thickened, extending from fundus, inferiorly completely covering the os, suggestive of placenta previa. The maximum thickness of placenta was approximately 8.9 cm. The placenta showed multiple varying size and echoic cystic lesions within. On color Doppler, there was mild peripheral vascularity. So the first differential which came into our mind was the partial molar pregnancy because of the snowstorm appearance of the multicystic lesions. But the fetus was corresponding to the age of gestation. There was no gross structural anomaly noted in the fetus. The beta HCG which was done prior was not unusually or moderately on the higher side. Therefore, the second differential which we considered was the diabetes, but the blood sugar were normal. And the rare uh, differential which we considered was the placental mesenchymal dysplasia, which has a similar ultrasound appearance, that is the placenta migeli with multicystic lesions, and the alpha fetoprotein done was also mildly raised. So we advise patient for repeat beta HCG and karyotyping to rule out the partial molar pregnancy. However, because of some cost issues, the karyotyping was not done and the beta HCG came out to be uh, mildly high. So we went uh, retrospectively and saw the few initial ultrasonography which were done elsewhere. So the first trimester revealed single life intrauterine fetus with optimal cardiac activity. NLNB scan was normal, there was no gross anomaly. Uh, at 18.3 weeks, level 2 was done and the placenta appeared thickened that time and was completely covering the internal os, but no fetal anomalies were detected. Now, the ultrasound repeated in our department after two weeks at 29.5 weeks revealed progressive increase in the thickness of the placenta to approximately 9.8 to 10 centimeter. And the planes between the placenta and the myometriums were preserved. There was no myometrial invasions. These findings were more inclined, uh, we were inclined towards the placental mesenchymal dysplasia. But now the fetus started showing early growth lag, which can be seen in the trending graph. The ultrasound done after two weeks, at, 30, at 31 weeks, reveals diffusely thickened placenta with further progressive increase in the maximum diameter till 11.9 to 12 centimeter. But the Doppler study now shows reduced diastolic flow in the umbilical artery, which was reaching the baseline without any absence or reversal, suggestive of mild to moderate fetal placental insufficiency. The PI was 1.5. The fetal weight was less than 5 percentile with interval growth lag of two weeks, suggestive of intrauterine growth restriction. After two days, this female with IUGR, fetal placental insufficiency, placenta previa with placenta migeli and multicystic lesion presented with heavy bleeding and was admitted for emergency LSCS. The LSCS was done under general anesthesia. Female baby was delivered. Placenta and membranes delivered completely. Placenta was edematous, weigh around 1300 grams and found to have multiple cysts. So these are the gross uh, image of the placenta. Uh, the left-hand side is the fetal surface and the right-hand side is the maternal surface. And as we can see, there are multiple cysts seen within the placenta. So to summarize, from 27 till 31st week, the placental thickness was progressively increasing from 8.9 to 12 centimeter. Lyca was decreasing from 16 to 10 to 9. And the Doppler findings were initially normal. And at 31 week, it showed mild to moderate fetal placental insufficiency. Initially, it was, uh, there was a satisfactory interval growth lag, but then there was an early growth lag with a two weeks of growth lag seen till 31st weeks. Fetal weight went down to less than 4 percentile. The placenta was sent for histopathological examination and it revealed uh, no trophoblastic proliferation, scalloping or stromal trophoblastic inclusion. And there was avascular and hydropic villi, fibrin deposition and thrombus, avascular cholangiomatous area, therefore suggestive of placental mesenchymal dysplasia. So this is the 
radiological image of the PMD, the gross image and the histopathological image. So the placenta mesenchymal dysplasia is characterized by varying expression of placenta migeli, aneurysmally dilated chorionic plate vessels, thrombosis of the dilated vessels, and large grape-like vesicles within the placenta. These appearances may mimic molar pregnancy on ultrasound and on initial gross placental examination following delivery. Placental mesenchymal dysplasia should be considered an uh, important differential diagnosis in cases of placenta migeli with multicystic placental lesions. This is often an underdiagnosed and underreported case because of the lack of awareness, but it has been documented in more in the female fetuses with a ratio of 3.5 to 1. As we can see in our case also, the female fetus was delivered. The outcome of the fetus is variable completely from normal fetus to an increased risk of IUGI, which was seen in our case, to fetal demise, lack of high velocity signal inside the lesion, and a normal karyotype favor a diagnosis of PMD. PMD must be differentiated from gestational trophoblastic disease because the management and the outcome differ. In contrast to molar pregnancy, the PMD can be associated with normal life birth, as I mentioned, associated with fetal growth restriction, even macrosomia, due to an association with a syndrome called backward Wittmann syndrome, fetal tumors, mostly hematomas, antepartum fetal death, and maternal complications, especially preeclampsia. But the definitive diagnosis relies on the histological features, including the mesenchymal hyperplasia, edema of the stem cell villi, dilated stem vessels with thickened vasculature, and the absence of trophoblastic hyperplasia. Few differential diagnoses of PMD would be partial molar pregnancy, hydropic degeneration of placenta, complete hydratiform mold with coexistent fetus, placental infarcts, chorioangioma, subchorionic hematoma, and spontaneous abortion with hydropic changes. So my take-home message would be, would be, bunch of grapes are not always mole, and placenta is a very vital and important organ of the obstetric examination. We try to focus more on the fetus and the fetus anomaly, but a healthy placenta will give a successful pregnancy. These are my few references. Thank you and have a nice day.